Look, Katrina, let's be real here. Having kids just isn't in the cards for us, okay? Your infertility is incurable. Why don't we ditch those pricey fertility treatments and start considering some more down-to-earth solutions? Wait, what's going on? Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? You know I've been dedicated to the treatment. And the doctors even mentioned some positive changes, remember? I just need to keep pushing a little harder, Seth. We're so close to reaching our goal. I can feel it. Are you nuts? You're just throwing away my hard-earned cash. Do you even realize how much sweat and toil goes into making that money every single day? What are you saying? You were the one who was so supportive and eager to help me with the treatment when I first mentioned it. And let's not forget, it's not just your money we're talking about here. I also contribute a significant amount to treatment costs. Your words are really hurting me, Seth. Look, I'm sorry, but you need to drop the stubborn act and hear me out. As the boss of this household, I've made up my mind. We're putting an end to all these infertility treatments and shifting gears to adoption. Wait, hold on a sec. What did you just say? Adopt a child? But you were dead set against that idea before. That's why we agreed to pursue fertility interventions, remember? I get it, but things have shifted now. It's been months since you kicked off the treatment, but we haven't seen any results yet. How much longer do you want me to hang in there? Forever? My patience is wearing thin, and I can't handle this solitary existence anymore. Do you have any idea how down and worthless I feel when I spot other couples strolling hand in hand with their kids on the streets? It's a major blow to my ego, I'm telling you. I'm sorry. Why didn't you share this with me earlier? I had no clue you were feeling so down and despondent about not having children. I wish I had known. Do you even have a clue how freaking embarrassed I am when everyone starts prying into my personal life, asking about my non-existent kids and their ages? It's beyond humiliating. And to make matters worse, some of my colleagues have been talking trash behind my back, making snide comments about me being barren or whatever. So tell me, what the heck am I supposed to do in this messed up situation? Should I just yell in their faces that it's actually you who's dealing with fertility problems, not me? Seth, listen. I want to apologize if I've made you feel this way. I understand you're feeling uneasy. But please remember that I never asked to be infertile, alright? Look, if you really want to go ahead with adoption, I don't have any objections. In fact, I think it's a noble cause. And we could give a better life to kids who are less fortunate. So, should we plan a visit to the orphanage soon? Well, no need to worry, babe, because I've already found the perfect kid who could be our child. Oh, really? You actually did? Did you go to the orphanage without letting me know? No, babe. It's more like a crazy twist of fate. You see... I happened to cross paths with this adorable little girl, completely by accident. I was just walking to the subway station when I dropped my wallet. And guess what? She noticed and actually followed me to return it. Turns out, she's living on the streets and spends her days digging through garbage. It broke my heart, and I think she could really use our help. Wow, really? She seems like a sweet and decent girl. She is indeed, darling. It would be such a shame if we couldn't adopt her as our daughter. I mean, she went out of her way to return my wallet. Despite her own tough circumstances. That act alone shows that she's someone we can trust and count on. Hmm. Do you think we could track her down if we go back to the spot where you first met her? I'm not entirely sure but I'll give it my best shot. I have a feeling she might still be hanging around that area. I'll go talk to the people nearby. I'm sure someone will have some information about the girl. Okay, cool.
Can I tag along too? Adopting a kid is a major thing, right? It's only fair that we make this decision together. Plus, I'm super excited to meet our soon-to-be daughter. I can't wait to finally see her and start this amazing journey as a family. Nah, babe. It's all good. No need for you to come along. Bringing you might just make things more complicated, you know? The thing is, this girl we're adopting is kind of shy and reserved. I'm worried she might bolt if she sees you there. So I think it's best if I handle this solo. Don't sweat it, Katrina. I got this covered. All right then, sweetheart. I'm sending you all my best wishes and the sincerest of luck. I truly hope everything goes smoothly for us. I must admit, though, I have this mix of nerves and excitement bubbling inside me. Do you also feel the same way? Well, of course. We're about to open our hearts and home to a child, to welcome them into our family and provide them with all the love and care they deserve. It's a big step, and it's natural to have some butterflies fluttering around. But you know what? I've got this. Trust me. Our family is going to be so much happier once our new little girl enters the picture. No doubt about it. Hey, have you settled in with our new daughter, Carolina? I gotta say, I told you she's an awesome kid and a perfect fit for our family. Yeah, I'm still adjusting to our new life with Carolina. She's such a sweetheart, and I'm beyond excited to share my life with her. The love and joy she brings into our home is incredible. And I can't wait to see what the future holds for us as a family. Well, that's awesome to hear. I know it can be a bit tough navigating the wonders of raising a child who's not biologically ours. But you know what? Carolina is more than just decent. She's a genuinely great girl. And she deserves nothing but pure happiness in her life. Yeah, you're right. Carolina is everything I could ever ask for in a child. She's helpful, intelligent, and kind. Not only that, she's such a wonderful learner and listener. It's amazing to see how quickly she absorbs information and how attentively she listens. One thing that really surprises me is Carolina's independence. She's only 10 years old but she can take great care of herself and even help out with household chores like cleaning and cooking. See, I told you, adopting Carolina was a solid move. I just knew it. I have this strong feeling she's going to be a huge asset for us down the road. I can already see her pitching in and making our lives easier. But you know what? There's something that really puzzles me about Carolina. Like, her behavior is a little intriguing, you know? Wait, what? What do you mean by that? I think she's totally fine. Yeah, she can be a bit quiet and keep to herself sometimes. But let's think about it logically. It's only been a few days since we brought her home. She needs time to get used to this new life, you know? So just give her some space, alright? I'm pretty confident that in a few months, she'll come out of her shell and shine like the sun. Well, I guess you might be onto something. But there's still something that just doesn't feel right to me. She seems a bit down sometimes, you know? And she's not very talkative either. She only really responds when I ask her something. But other than that, she's pretty quiet all day long. Yeah, I totally get it. That poor girl must have had a tough time growing up. So now, as her new parents, it's our responsibility to shower her with all the love and care she deserves. She needs that extra dose of TLC from us, no doubt about it. But that's not the only thing that I find kind of peculiar about our daughter. You know, Carolina tends to push me away whenever I try to show her affection, even if it's just a gentle touch on her cheeks. And have you noticed how she always wears long sleeves? Even on scorching hot days? What's with all the issues you're finding with our daughter? She's just a little kid for crying out loud. Why can't you give her a break instead of constantly criticizing her? Do you think you're some kind of detective or something? Lighten up a bit, will you? 
Seth, I don't understand what you're getting at. I'm simply trying to build a stronger connection with Carolina. It's crucial for us as parents to truly know our children and be there for them. You know that, don't you? And here's the thing. If Carolina doesn't learn to open up a bit more, I worry she might struggle in making friends at school. She's 10 years old, right in the midst of her school years. Education plays a vital role in her physical and mental growth, so we need to ensure she's adapting well. Hold up. Are you actually thinking of sending Carolina to school? Do you think it's even necessary? Excuse me? What's all this talk about? Isn't school mandatory? Obviously, Carolina is going to school. Is there some kind of issue you have with that? Okay, okay. I hear you loud and clear. So you're aiming to be this role model mom, huh? Well, go ahead and do whatever floats your boat. But as far as I can tell, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Carolina. So quit being so nosy and start focusing on your own business instead of getting worked up over nothing. I can't believe you would say something like that. Ever since we welcomed Carolina into our home, you seem completely indifferent towards her. What's going on with you? Sometimes I question if it was really you who wanted to adopt Carolina as our daughter. Seriously, Katrina? Don't you realize how swamped I am with work? I can't even catch a break or have any fun anymore. I get that your job keeps you crazy busy. But can you at least give more attention to Carolina, alright? She's our daughter now, and as her parents, it's our responsibility to take care of her and provide the best environment for her to thrive. Alright, gotcha. Anyway, I gotta get back to work. So please don't bother me with trivial matters, okay? Hey, Carolina. Dinner's all set and I'm here waiting for you, my sweetheart. Come join me, okay? It looks like your dad has to work late once again, so he won't be able to join us for dinner. It's just the two of us. You and me. Oh, and it would mean a lot to me if you could come out of your room every now and then and have a face-to-face -face conversation with me. I don't mean to be pushy, sweetheart. All I want is for us to have a good relationship and get along. It's okay, Mom. You can go ahead and eat first. I'm not feeling hungry just yet. What do you mean you're not hungry? You skipped lunch and breakfast, too. By now, you must be really hungry, I'm sure. Are you feeling sick, tired, or in pain anywhere, sweetheart? Just let me know, and I'll do whatever I can to help you. You know, now that we're mother and daughter, I want us to be honest with each other. But if you truly don't want to share, that's okay, too. I don't want to invade your privacy. I appreciate your concern, Mom, but I really am not hungry at the moment. Usually I only eat one meal a day, and it's not even at this time. My meal time is usually around one in the morning. What? One in the morning? Oh my goodness! I'm so sorry, my dear. It must be incredibly tough for you, living all alone on the streets, right? Seth mentioned that he saw you rummaging through the trash for food. Hmm, that explains the strange noises I heard in the middle of the night. Was that you going downstairs to find something to eat? Yes, I'm sorry. It's just that I was so hungry. I hope you're not mad at me for it. Oh, no, no, no. That's completely alright, sweetheart. I'm not upset at all. But honestly, it's not healthy to skip most of the important meals during the day and only eat so late at night. I believe it's time for you to adjust and start eating at the proper times. That way, you can have a healthier and more balanced lifestyle. Don't you think so, too? I would like to, but I don't think Seth would let me anyway. Huh? Seth? You mean your dad? Why wouldn't he let you eat? Did he actually say that to you? Yeah, he's my dad, but I don't know. I've never really seen him as one. What? What happened, sweetheart? Did he mistreat you? Please, tell me everything. You know I'm always here to listen and support you in the best way I can. It's okay, Mom. I know you always have my best interests at heart. But honestly, I'm okay. 
I've gotten used to eating and living like this, so you don't have to worry about me. No, my dear, this is not healthy at all. You're practically starving yourself for most of the day and only eating past midnight. I'm sorry, but this is not how a normal human being's biological clock should function. Listen, Carolina, please be completely honest with me. Did Seth do something that hurt you? You're safe with me, and I promise to keep everything between us. My lips are sealed. I swear on my name. Hey, why don't you back off and focus on your own matters? You're really starting to annoy me, you know. What's your problem? What the heck is wrong with you? Huh? What... What are you saying, Carolina? Where did you pick up this way of speaking? This is not how a child should talk, especially someone your age. Can you please just tell me what's happening? I promise I won't do anything that would put you in danger. <sighs> I'm, I'm sorry. It's... Just my natural defense mechanism, you know? It's what happens from living with Seth and Daisy for so long. Huh? What did you say? You've been living with Seth before? And who is Daisy? I'm genuinely confused. Can you please clarify things for me? <laughs> well, yeah. Seth and Daisy are my real parents. I used to live with them. But one day, Seth told me that I deserved to live in a better place because I was well-behaved, so he brought me here. Wait, what? Seth and Daisy are your real parents? You mean, your biological parents? Yeah, Daisy gave birth to me, so she must be my biological mom. Right? This is unbelievable! I can't believe Seth has been cheating on me all this time! I'm sorry, but I don't want to go back to that place. I don't want to live with Seth and Daisy anymore. Please, I know you're not my biological mom, but please don't send me back there. I promise I'll behave and I won't cause you any trouble. No, of course I won't send you back to live with Seth and Daisy. But you need to be honest with me. What did they do to you that makes you so afraid of them? They're not very kind to me. But I don't want to go into details because I'm scared of saying something I shouldn't. Look, Carolina, you're completely safe here with me. Just open up and tell me what's happening. And I promise I'll help you handle everything. Seth and Daisy, they don't feed me at all. I have to scavenge for food in the fridge when they're asleep. To be honest, I, they don't care if I'm dead or alive. And they often punish me harshly. Like, that one time when they hit me with a broom just because I accidentally spilled some tea on the floor while bringing it to them? I still have bruises from that incident. What? Not only did they neglect to feed you, but they even resorted to physical violence? That's absolutely terrible! I can't believe it! Yeah, but I've gotten used to it already. It's not like it's the first time they've hurt me. In fact... They seem to enjoy tormenting me. It's like it's one of their hobbies. Oh no! My husband and his mistress are neglecting and abusing you? This is absolutely horrifying! But I'm curious, if you're Seth and Daisy's child, wouldn't they be afraid of you getting close to me? Why did Seth insist on bringing you to our house? Aren't they worried about getting caught? Well, of course they're scared of getting caught. That's why they sent me here in the first place, you know. I'm sorry, but I don't quite understand. What do you mean by that? You see, I'm not the type to give up easily. Whenever they'd hurt me, I'd cry or make a lot of noise to catch the attention of the neighbors. <laughs> one time, one of the neighbors even reported them to the police on suspicion of child abuse. But Daisy is a cunning woman and she found a way to hide her terrible actions. They're scared that the police might uncover their abusive treatment towards me. So that's why they sent me to this house. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I had no idea you had to endure so much at such a young age. Don't worry, I'm going to make things right. I'll protect you from those horrible people. You're an incredible girl, and you don't deserve to go through such pain and suffering. Are you serious, Katrina? 
I thought you'd hate me. No, Carolina. Why would I ever hate you? You're a sweet, innocent, and courageous girl. And I'm proud of you for standing up for yourself and fighting for your freedom. I swear on my name that I will ensure justice is served, and those criminals will pay for the crimes they've committed. Hey Carolina, you little parasite. I hope you didn't spill any beans to Katrina that you're not supposed to, right? You know the consequences if you disobey me and reveal our little secret to your new mommy, right? <laughs> Katrina is such a gullible fool. She completely buys into the lies I've been feeding her. She doesn't even have a clue that you, Carolina, are the result of my secret affair with Daisy. You're repulsive, Seth. I can't believe you would stoop so low. Hold on a second. What did you just say to me, you little insolent worm? It seems like my wife has been spoiling you so much that you've forgotten your place, huh? Well, let me set things straight. You mean absolutely nothing to me. You're just a nuisance, a total waste of space. Frankly, you shouldn't have even been born. You're insufferable, Seth. Can you please start behaving like an actual human being? Wow, look who's talking all tough, huh? Do you even have a clue why you exist in the first place? I made a little mistake and ended up bringing a useless blob like you into this world. Consider yourself lucky you're still breathing when you should have been thrown away like a little fetus. Now check out what you've got. A roof over your head, a cozy bed to sleep in every night, and yeah, a loving mom too. I'm not saying it's all fancy, but it's definitely better than the cramped dog cage you used to call home, right? Ha 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 ha! You made her live in a dog cage too? Stop talking. You're seriously grossing me out. I'm taking you to the police, Seth. This world doesn't need sickos like you around. Hold on a second. What did you just say, you idiot? It seems like you can't handle living a decent life, so you're causing this little commotion just to go back to living like a dirty rat in Daisy's house? Or maybe you're actually missing the brutal beatings and torment I used to put you through. Listen up. Even though you're not Katrina's biological child, she still treats you like her own, right? She even got you a new phone. So what the heck are you complaining about? Get a grip, know your place, and fix your attitude right now. Or else I'll have to resort to my old ways of teaching you a lesson, got it? Listen, Seth, I've heard enough of your crap. We're getting a divorce, and you better pack your stuff and get the hell out of my house. Did that sink in, or do I need to repeat it louder? Whoa, hold on a second. Who am I talking to right now? Is this Carolina? It says your name on my phone, so I can't be mistaken. No, Seth. It's none other than your lovely wife, Katrina. Who's fired up and ready to bring you down. You have no idea how furious I am right now, babe. I'm so livid that I'd happily squish you like a tiny ant, darling. Hey, is that really you, Katrina? What's up, sweetheart? Why are you texting me from Carolina's phone? Where is Carolina anyway? I want to have a chat with her. Why do you want to talk to her? Just so you can throw around your abusive words and try to make her keep quiet about your heinous crime? You're beyond disgusting. Whoa, Katrina, hold up. I think there's a major mix-up happening. Honestly, I have no clue what you're going on about. What crime are you even referring to? You can't just throw accusations at someone without any evidence or basis, you know? What else is there? You cheated on me with this girl named Daisy, got her pregnant, and then had me raise your child? That's messed up, no doubt about it. So let me get this straight. Did you cheat on me even before we got married? You already had a girlfriend and a daughter, but you still decided to marry me? Nah, hold on, Katrina. It's not what you're thinking. Let me set the record straight, okay? 
Daisy played me, all right? She set me up with this baby situation. But listen, I don't love her. You're the one who's always on my mind, babe. You're the only one for me. That's why I picked you to marry, no one else. You gotta trust me on this, all right? No need to say anything more, Seth. It's done. Over. Finish between us. You're nothing but a terrible, abusive monster. And you'll be locked up in prison for all the horrendous things you've put me and Carolina through. What in the world are you blabbering about? Prison? Why? What have I ever done that's so wrong? Give me some explanation. Carolina told me everything. And you've even admitted it yourself, right? Those text messages you sent, plus all the scars and bruises on Carolina's body, are solid evidence to send you and Daisy straight to the slammer. You've been abusing her, tormenting her, and it breaks my heart to hear the little girl talk about all the times you treated her like garbage. Whoa, 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 hold up. You're totally misunderstanding the situation here. It's not at all what you think, okay? I've never laid a hand on anyone in my life. In fact, I've always been a stand-up husband to you, right? Look, I'm your one and only hubby. So throwing me in the prison would be seriously wrong, don't you think? Well, guess what? You'll also be shown the door at my dad's company. I mean, come on, it's pretty obvious, right? No one in their right mind would tolerate having a monster like you who abuses others as their subordinate. Ha! Huh. Can you believe my dad even considered passing the company to you after he retires? I bet that's what you were after all along when you married me, huh? Money, power, and my dad's business. You sneaky snake. Both you and Daisy deserve to rot in prison for the rest of your miserable lives. And hey, I bet your fellow inmates won't take it easy on you once they find out why you're locked up. They'll give you a taste of your own medicine for hurting an innocent little kid. No, Katrina, please. I don't deserve to end up in prison. I have a promising career ahead of me, and I'm the one who's supposed to inherit your dad's company, remember? Please, don't do this to me. I don't deserve to be treated like this. Honestly, the thought of going to prison scares the living daylights out of me. I've never been in that kind of situation before. Can you please reconsider, Katrina? I'm begging you. Think about all the good times we shared as a married couple. You know how happy we were when we were together, right? Hey, Katrina, are you still there? Don't leave me hanging, please! The despicable actions of Seth and Daisy came to light and the shocking case of Carolina's abuse quickly gained widespread attention and infamy. The public was rightfully furious at the way Seth and Daisy had treated an innocent 10-year-old girl. The outcry for justice was so intense that people demanded the harshest possible punishment for both of them. As a result, they were ultimately sentenced to prison for their monstrous crime against a defenseless child. Following those events, the authorities granted me custody of Carolina. Now, we live together under one roof, experiencing a life of happiness as mother and daughter. Even though Carolina isn't my biological child, my love for her knows no bounds. And I care for her as if she were my own flesh and blood. Our bond is strong, and I am committed to providing her with a nurturing and supportive environment. Together, we create a loving family, built on love, trust, and the shared journey of healing and growth.